we're going to do a very comprehensive guide on how to play JP. Uh, so let's get started. First things first, um, you got to pick, you know, the right costume. Every character, it's the most crucial thing you can do. Now, JP's really only got his, like, classic um, old man look here with his little vest and stuff, but really the pimp suit is where it's at, and the best color is clearly gold. So, there you go, now you know. Uh, the next thing to do is to also understand when you pick a character, it's very important to be intimidating. You want to make sure you do the best facial animation. Down, back, and wiggle his head is definitely the best options. His other ones are kind of lame. All right, getting into it, um, the other thing just about JP is which controller type to use. I find people seem to want to know this a lot. Uh, I use a stick, but you are probably actually going to find anybody who uses a controller is slightly better for JP, just for things like having drive impact on an easier to push button. So realistically, there's no like limitations to them. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can kind of get away with anything in Street Fighter VI, but in particular, JP is not a character that's going to struggle. Okay, uh, so basically here's the format. I've got a giant list of like everything you could ever need to know about JP, and we're gonna run through it one piece at a time so I make sure I don't forget anything. So if the pacing's a little bit less natural than usual where I'm winging it, that's why. Uh, so let's get on into how to play JP. So first thing to understand, JP is a zoning character, which means that he's wanting, he wants or prefers to play at absolute max range because he can hit you from the entire screen away. And he is safe for the most part. Very few characters can punish this. Uh, there's a few that can, we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, so you really don't want to play too close. His normals are kind of weak, so uh, we'll explain those kind of one at a time. But uh, they're fine, they're just not quite as good as the other characters in the cast. They don't have quite as much range. Uh, the frame data is okay on them. They're not horrible. They're just not great. Uh, so let's get into his normals and we'll go over them kind of one at a time. Uh, and uh, well, we'll go over the ones that matter, really. There's some that you probably aren't going to push too often. So anyways, you've got uh, Light Punch Crouching. This is his fast move. You're going to use it all the time to try to get people off of you or to confirm into a combo. The nice thing about Light Punch Crouching is you can do three of them into a special move and that gives you kind of a bit of an escape. So anytime you're in danger, you can kind of like mash this one. Uh, obviously you don't want to mash when you're in too much trouble, but it is your quick punish. So if they do something dangerous or sneaky, or they're trying to keep a lot of pressure on you, crouching light punch is kind of your go-to button. It's also very, very good at stopping people trying to get in on you. Uh, so like if somebody's trying to drive rush forward or something like that, crouching light punch is a nice, very quick answer to kind of tap them. But if they've drive rushed and they've already pressed a button, it will beat light punch. So you need to be careful about that. Uh, standing light punch is also a very good button. Uh, the range on it is okay for a light punch. This is a really, really good button to prevent a lot of the shenanigans characters use to get in on JP. So like for example, Ken's, uh, I don't know the official name of it, but that little spin kick move he does to get in on you that puts him plus on advantage. You can standing light punch and kind of beat that before the kick comes out. So that's a really, really important button to use a lot to try to keep people off of JP. Once you get really close to two characters on JP, you're in trouble and you are now kind of in panic mode to try to figure out how to get out and you're probably gonna get stuck in a long block string because you're in danger. And obviously anytime you're stuck in a long block string, you're in danger to throws. So those are his light punches. Um, medium punch is uh, not really something, uh, well, basically the, the medium punch standing has really good range. So it's really cool. And you're probably gonna think that looks like a great normal. And frankly, it is his only normal that can really compete with the rest of the cast in terms of like range and frame data. The problem with it is it doesn't cancel into anything. So you really only ever get 840 damage off of this on a punish counter, uh, significantly less, you get 700 on a normal hit. So yeah, it's a thing. Uh, you can use it for spacing, but it is dangerous because obviously it's a very, very high risk for very low reward kind of move. So you're probably not gonna wanna push this too often. Crouching medium punch on the other hand is his amazing button. Notably, this will stuff things like Blanca Ball. So if you're getting having any trouble with Blancas, just throwing Blanca Ball at you, just press this button and you'll punish counter it. Uh, and it is cancelable. So this is going to be a button you use all the time. And we'll go into how to use that a lot more later. Uh, what have we got? Medium Kick Crouching. So this is uh, not cancelable as well. You can't get too much off this except 700 damage. The difference here is that JP does this little shuffle forward. So the range is actually decent. It's still not amazing but you'll see it's further than his heavy kick. So his crouching heavy kick is horrible. This is a little bit better. Uh, the nice thing about the heavy kick obviously is you get the knockdown. So you still want to use that if you're in range versus the medium kick, but if you're just outside of the heavy kick range and you're like, ah, I don't think it's going to land, you can go for the medium kick. It gives you a little extra wiggle. It's just a good way to kind of like stuff people who are trying to come in on you and play that footsie game. 
Again, it's a little bit dangerous, but the recovery time is fast enough that if they jump or something, you'll have time to block. So it's a lot less risky than the medium punch where it's got a lot longer startup. Uh, 28 frames versus 35 gives you a little bit extra safety. So that one's decent. Uh, medium kick standing is a decent button. Again, the range is not great on it. It's pretty small. The nice thing about this though is that it is cancelable. So you can do like a drive rush off of it, which makes it a very good button because if you manage to beat somebody with that, uh, you can go into some combos if I do it right. There you go. So you can cancel that into crouching heavy punch, which is for JP. If I, I'm really not doing this right. There you go. For JP, uh, that is his, that's where you want to be. If you can land a drive rush crouching heavy punch, you basically can do anything you want on a character, which is great. Uh, what have we got here? Medium or heavy punch standing. So heavy punch standing is a really, probably his longest range, just normal um, that he has for, that's cancelable. So you can uh, cancel it into stuff and combo. It's decent. Um, it's again, not incredible, but not too bad. The biggest problem with it is just that it's shorter than most characters, long range normals that they'll use to poke. So if you're fighting like Cammy or something and she's doing that kick, you're in trouble. Uh, but if you land a punish counter on it, <coughs> it's decently strong. Uh, it can cancel into some extra damage. So it's a good normal to use. Uh, what's up next? Heavy kick standing. So heavy kick standing personally is my favorite normal of JP's. Um, yeah, it goes slightly less range than the uh, standing heavy punch, because uh, but just barely. The nice thing about standing heavy kick is it is a target combo. So if you press standing heavy punch right after, it will go into a target combo, and that heavy punch and that target combo is also cancelable. So you can do that, which is genuinely his main bread and butter. We'll get into his combo soon. Okay, heavy kick. Anti-air. So the other thing too is uh, he's got, actually, you know what? We'll cover anti-air as another section. Heavy kick forward standing. So this uh, move is if you press forward with heavy kick, you get a different kick. It's a launcher. So you can throw people up in the air with it. Uh, it's also usable as a, uh, as a anti-air. The thing about standing heavy kick is that it is, you can do the target combo and the target combo is cancelable. The heavy kick itself is not. So that's where it is a little bit more dangerous because like on uh, standing heavy punch, you can do a drive impact, uh, like you can cancel a drive impact, you can, you're kind of protected in some way. Whereas with this, you can only get into the drive impact once you've done the punch. So if you commit to the heavy kick, you're kind of committing to that punch a lot of the time as well. So it's a really good move, but it's a little bit riskier because there's a lot more time before you can cancel something, which in Street Fighter 6 is important because drive impact is a crazy button and everybody pushes it all the time. Um, so the forward kick version of this, is special cancelable so that makes it a little bit better for if you land an anti-air you can get an extra move off uh, and do a little bit more damage the problem with it i find is that the um, like the spacing of where it hits is a little bit weird it also has two hits on it so as you can see you can land two hits or uh, you can also get uh, a single oops, a single hit version of it if i time that right you get two in the air or you get the one like that the one hit is actually cancelable and actually better in a weird way. So you'd really think that like the best thing you could do is that uh, and then land your specials. But if I put them more mid range here, if I can get Jamie to go on the side, let's throw them over there to get some space. Uh, so this forward heavy kick, if you land it, you don't really get much off of it uh, with the two hits actually. So you'd think maybe that would be like a really good combo because that uh, the heavy spike can juggle onto the wall, but nope, uh, it actually misses if you do that, but it can hit if you get the single hit, which I'll show you later in a quarter combo. So those are basically his normals. Like I said, uh, I like this combo a lot. I probably abuse it too much right now, which is a habit I need to break. Standing heavy punch is also very solid. Crouching medium punch, crouching light punch are great buttons. Uh, and then his medium kicks are okay. Uh, again, though, this like, if you have the really good reaction times and you can confirm this, it's really strong. Um, because you can go into like anything but you do just want to be careful because it's very very close and on jp when you're standing and you're close the rest of the cast kind of has an advantage on you so it's something to watch out for um special normals okay so he's got quite a few special normals um most notably the first one is just simply an overhead uh it's just forward medium kick and you kick over their head uh you can do it off of a drive rush which makes it a combo uh, a bull button as well oops i didn't do it right Still didn't do it right. Okay, I'm just gonna suck at it today, but 
There you go. So you can confirm that into a crushing medium punch, which lets you get a combo if you do it off a drive rush, but just standard overhead, you're just gonna do 7% of their health and that's really all you get for it. Not a button you're gonna use a lot, but maybe on like a corner round ender, you wanna be tricksy, they won't always see it coming. Uh, long range trip is, so for, down forward heavy punch does this very, very long range good poke knockdown for 900 damage. You don't get a lot off of it, except because it does a hard knockdown, you can then go into some sort of a jump game um, it's decent. Uh, if you see them, basically, if you can see their feet from a really far distance, nobody suspects they're in any danger from JP at this range. So when you suddenly go and poke them from halfway across the screen, you do catch a lot of people. It is very unsafe on block, so you do need to be careful. Uh, we set them to block all. It's minus 14. So if you do that anywhere close, you are going to die. If you're very far away, though, it is very hard to punish from this distance because even at minus 14, there's not, not every character can do something about it. So this one's very dependent on the character. I would not get comfortable using this very often. I would suggest against it. Uh, forward heavy kick. Um, yep, covered forward heavy kick already. Back medium punch. Medium punch is uh, kind of a special, it's a target combo. It's good because it does more damage than crouching medium punch, but it's not something I personally use very much because um, while it is special cancelable, uh, a lot of time what you'll be doing is just crouching medium punch uh, because again the range on the first hit is very small so you can use it say like after cross up or something uh, but the as you just saw there it's not always confirmed that that's going to work so a lot of the time you just go into crouching light punch anyways so i don't find it's an overly used um target combo but it does have its uses it's good damage it's very easy to confirm into specials it gives you a lot of time to think uh, so it's decent uh, what's next? Heavy kick into heavy punch. Yep, so we talked about this already. So let's talk about some cool properties about this target combo really quickly because it's great. First off, on hit, you're plus three. Uh, it's special cancelable. And even more important, even the full target combo. So most of the time in this game, if you do the target combo, you are in uh, a negative state. So you're basically going to be punished. For a two hit heavy co target combo, you're only minus three. So you're actually safe, which means nobody can punish this. Uh, with like a crouching jab or anything like that. So that's why this button or this move is so cool. And the other thing is look at the drive meter at the top and let's cancel this into something. That's over one bar every time you land that blocked. So if you can burn a bar, so let's say you do that two or three times in a round, you've burned half their meter. So it's actually a really good move in that way. Um, but again, it's risky, right? If, if they just drive impact right when you do this, you're in trouble. You got to have enough time to get that heavy punch out to be able to DI back. So there's some definite risk to this move, but it's really good. And especially I found as people walk forward, they will just walk into this. When they're trying to move in on JP and they're trying to get closer and play that footsie game, a lot of the time they'll just kind of walk forward. It's a good just kind of counter poke because again, you can confirm off of it really easily and get some decent damage. The other thing about it is it's gonna be like his main combo thing. So when you have guaranteed damage, so let's just say we're gonna do punish counter. Uh, very easy to do and it's uh it's going to be used for a ton of his setups so it's one of his best um target combo special normals uh, in the game um and then i think as i said the um medium punch is a very long uh it's technically not a special normal but uh because the other version comes out like this um it's yeah it's a long poke it's a thing i, I genuinely i used it a lot when i started playing and then i've used it a lot less because street fighter 6 has crazy damage okay um, his specials. So uh, I'm just going to go through them very quickly so that we talk about what they are and then I'll go through all the situations where you'll use those as the video goes on. So first off, uh, I've also got some different naming conventions for them because I find JP's specials to have very weird names. So unfortunately, Triglov, Strybog, Departure, Amnesia, Torbalon, I don't think is going to be very easy to remember. So for this video in particular, I'm going to make up a new naming convention. Uh, this is a spike. This is a horizontal spike or H spike. Uh, this is uh, his portals that he can put down. So the official name is Departure. Sorry, this is Triglav, also known as Spike. This is Strybog, also known as Horizontal Spike. This is Departure, also known as Portal. Um, the portal can also do a portal spike. So I'm gonna call that a P spike. Uh, amnesia is this move where he glows for a second. That's basically his counter move. So I'm just going to call that his counter. Uh, I know there's also counter hits in Street Fighter. So maybe that's confusing to you, but apologies. It just makes a lot of sense in my brain. Uh, Torbalon, which I call his ghosts. He can send out ghosts. 
and uh, Embrace, which is his other type of ghost, where that's a full screen command grab. Um, so each of these are his specials. Again, we're gonna talk about how to use them, so I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about them right now, but uh, basically there's a lot of tricksy mix-ups and what you really wanna do on JP is be full screen and finding ways to kind of mix people up with this as they get up, because you can see that's 20% right there, right? If you land two of these at the same time. So he's one of the few characters that can do combos from the entire distance of the screen, but uh, they are kind of dependent on it being set up, right? You can't combo, you can't do this and then throw a ghost and catch them with a second hit. So uh, that's one shame, but there is some stuff you could do, like you could uh, super full screen at any point in time. So he does have a lot of damage to confirm off of a single fireball. It's also the riskiest part of JP's game where you want to be careful because basically at full screen, you're normally safe. There's a few characters like Cami that can just super you from the entire screen and kill you. Um, but uh, the minute that they jump forward once, this is now the danger zone. All of your buttons are super slow. All of your fireballs are incredibly slow to recover. And all they have to do is jump at you and you are basically dead. So pretty much the minute that, and it's hard to tell because sometimes you'll look like, you know, this still looks like full screen, the way the camera scales in in the game. It's not, this is full screen. So this is already more dangerous because a lot of characters can like drive rush and hit you from there. JP's drive rush sucks, but everybody else can basically run all the way into your face from any distance, except actual full screen. Normally from here, you should be able to be safe enough for them to do one move and for you to recover from a single fireball. And then closer, you're starting to play the guessing game. Okay, um, let's also go into JP's supers. So he has three supers, um, like everybody else. First one is double forward punches. It shoots this beam thing. Honestly, it sucks. It's not a great super. Um, you can cancel into it off of like pretty much any combo. Uh, my brain didn't even process that. Uh, so you can pull a little bit more damage because that's 30, 60 versus if you just did like a normal special move that's 24 damage. So that's an extra 6% damage for burning one bar of your super, which is fine. Uh, one bar of super is nothing in Street Fighter. You'll get that like multiple times around. So it's some it's a thing, but for 6% damage, it's not great. And the other problem with JP is uh, we can just cancel into his level three super after the special. So instead of gaining 6% damage, you gain like an extra 20 plus percent damage. And because it's so easy to confirm into JP's level three special, you just won't use his level one very much. Although, um, if I time this correctly, you can hit it after any sort of wall splat as well. So if you just need that little bit of extra damage to edge out the round, it's a good option uh, if you don't want to save up for your level three. Um, so it's a thing you can confirm into. Uh, it's okay, but again, you're not going to find yourself using this one all the time. Uh, and the startup on it is uh, a little slow. It's nothing crazy, but still eight frames. So like you're not going to use that to just like, you know, I don't know, wake up counter a lot of things. The other thing it's used for is when you're burned out and you're in the corner and they're going to drive impact you, that's a good time to level one super because it's a way to break their drive impact because you can't drive impact back yourself. Uh, hard to do though, the timing's finicky. So if you're watching uh, this and you're really, really good at that, maybe it'll work for you. For a lot of players, I think you're going to struggle to react because it's really fast. Um, level two. So super two is the back, double quarter circle back punches and it spawns these ghosts over their head. Uh, the cool thing about the ghost is the first one hits normal, the next one hits high, the next one hits low, then the other one hits high again. Uh, so what it's actually good for is a couple things. One, if they're just low on health, you can pop it from across the screen. You can pop a portal, you can teleport in, and you can just do some stuff, whatever rando mix up you want to do so that they panic and don't know how to block. Honestly, it's ludicrously hard to block this. Uh, although what they can do is parry it. So if they're going to parry, I suggest going in and just going for a throw. Unfortunately, all you get is one throw out of it because once you've thrown them out of that super, it doesn't hit anymore at all. There's not enough time on it, but it's still some almost guaranteed damage to burn your level two super to get something is not as that bad of an option. Now, if you're against a JP and someone does that to you, you can just jump forward and the whole thing will miss you. So if you have any opportunity to just move forward, it's a very easy escape. But that's basically why you want to use it as a, you want to find a way to keep them in, right? So, uh, yeah, you want to still pressure them somehow, because if you just throw it out there randomly, they just jump forward and then they're completely fine. Uh, the other thing about level two is you'll see this in JP's um, combo tutorials uh, in the game is you can cancel into it from this target combo. Uh, I think I did that wrong. Yeah, I dropped the last hit. Uh, but basically, like, that's a really...
decent way to get a lot of damage off of a level two. So if you ever do land this target combo, it's a good cancel into it. Um, the other trick that's actually good to know that I learned is when you do this, like just tap heavy kick and it basically guarantees that link. If you try to time it, it's actually kind of hard because it comes out of this freeze frame thing. So you can just spam heavy kick and then that guarantees basically the hardest part of that combo. So that one's pretty cool. It does a really good amount of damage and uh, it's confirmable as well. And then his level three. So his level three super is amazing. It's a full screen teleport. It grabs them. It does not anti-air. If you shoot at somebody in the air, you'll actually just kind of go underneath them and miss. So don't try that. Um, and you're going to do it all the time. It's forward forward kicks and it just can go grab anything. So it's a good way to punish a full screen fireball. Um, but more important, it's uh, cancelable from like everything because most of JP's stuff throws them across the screen. So anytime that you land like a combo, uh, oops, why did I not do that right? Sorry, I just woke up. So you can basically throw them across the screen, bounce them with your ghost, bounce them with your spike, then teleport across the screen and grab them for an easy 50 plus percent damage. That's, I burned a meter to get that off of this target combo, but um, yeah, pretty much any time that you get some sort of wall splat, you've got a super. However, it's even easier than that off of a light punch. So if you get a couple light punches, and I'll turn off punish counter to make sure that this is really obvious, this lands from anything. So light punch can cancel into to H spike, uh, horizontal spike. Off of horizontal spike, you can super. So you'll never struggle to land this in any match. Uh, basically, anytime you get any sort of combo, you can super. The other thing, like I showed earlier, off of a spike, uh, just standard full screen kind of fireball game. Uh, if I can not screw this up. Uh, one more time. <laughs> Maybe again. Yeah, I'm really struggling today. Those inputs look right to me. Let's... There we go. Just the timing. Uh, yeah, off of a single spike, you can super. So if you land one fireball at any point in the game, when they wake up, you just get 44% of their health and damage. It's incredibly strong. This is definitely JP super you're going to want to save for if you can afford it. Uh, as I said, for level one super, if you want to like just clinch out the round, go for it. Otherwise, that is his amazing move. Okay, this video is getting crazy long. We got a lot to go through, so let's keep on working through. Um, okay, so standard stuff. Let's just talk about like some of his regular moves. So bread and butter combos, light punch, light punch, light punch into H spike, uh, just 15% of their health. You can do that off of a cross up really easily. Uh, oops, if I, there you go, 16% right there. Uh, that's kind of like one of his go-tos, especially when people are pressuring you. You can cancel off of any amount of light punches. So if they're far away, you might not get all three. Uh, it's best to get three if you can. But uh, if they're, you know, at a range, then cancel off one. So it's, uh, yeah, just a very, very easy to do combo. It's very easy to confirm into. It also, you have a lot of time on the light punches. Like it's kind of slower and you'll feel that sometimes in the game where you feel like you're not going fast enough and it'll still work. Uh, also, frankly, you can just mash uh, and it'll, it'll work a lot of the time. So if you're really just in a panic and your brain's like, ah, what do I do? You can just, yeah. Uh, that one actually didn't connect, but uh, sometimes you can just mash your way out of that and it can, be, it can work. So not something I suggest doing, but again, it's an option. Um, okay, uh, his next one is Crouching Medium Punch. So crazy, Crouching Medium Punch is uh, your faster move to cancel into. So Crouching Medium Punch can cancel into H-Spike. Uh, you can cancel it into Ghosts and stuff as well, uh, but they don't always connect because you don't have enough hit stun. So H-Spike's usually your go-to. Uh, this is again just like a really standard, I don't have any way to use the heavy version of the H spike. Um, so you'll just go into the crouching medium punch cancel. Uh, it's pretty strong, crouching medium punch cancels in anything, but because it's a cancelable move, you can also cancel it into drive rush. So, uh, or drive cancel, sorry. So you can drive cancel crouching medium punch into crouching heavy punch, and that's where your options really open up because you can now do full screen stuff. So basically, anytime you land a crouching heavy punch, uh, if you just crouching heavy punch into heavy, uh, actually, sorry, let's put on block after first. Uh, it does not work. So that doesn't connect. Un very unfortunate because that would have made JP amazing. It does work if you do it off of a drive rush because the drive rush gives you additional frame advantage. And then you can cancel into the heavy, or heavy H spike. 
So uh, this is where JP's basically main meter burn is gonna come from. Anytime you land anything, you're gonna wanna cancel it into this. And then once you've got them full screen, the standard no meter combo is to just do what I did there. I do medium kicks, so that gives you a ghost, an overhead ghost. I find that works better because it catches a little bit higher, although technically you can do any of the ghosts uh, and it should juggle long enough to get that to work. Um, and that's basically, his B&B &B is really um, getting this heavy spike off into anything full screen. So that's his main way to do kind of big target combo damage. And like I said, after that spike, you could level three super. The other thing you can do is after this, you can throw the, um, you can basically burn him a little bit extra meter to get a little bit of extra damage. There's two ways to do that. You can do the EX ghosts because they hit twice when you burn the EX version of that, or you can use EX spikes and spike again. So basically there's a couple ways you can juggle off of this. Um, doo -doo -doo. So if you throw the ghosts, that's just a little bit more damage and it'll juggle them a little bit longer. Uh, I believe if I do this. Ah, you can get two stabs uh, if you do that and time that properly as well. So it's just a way if you're like, again, close to clinching on the round, you need an extra 4% damage, just burn the meter uh, if you've got it. I think JP is an easy character to keep meter on because you're not drive canceling all the time. And that's really one of your heavy bur uh, meter burners in this game. There's three bars right there. Uh, versus you know, doing an EX move or something like that where you're only going to burn two. So he's pretty good. Uh, the other thing to think about as well with his when we're talking about EX is, yeah, so some of his notable EX burners uh, is the heavier spikes does an extra 2% damage, but it gives you additional juggle time because it bounces them twice. Uh, Ghosts, like I said, gives two hits, makes it easier to combo into something else. Also, it just stays on screen a little bit longer so you can catch people jumping and things like that. Um, his uh, command grab ghost is just a little bit faster and sneakier and does a lot more damage 2600 versus uh, 1800 so especially if you catch them with a punish counter on that it's going to be like 30 percent of their health and that's pretty crazy for like a full screen command grab the other thing that's probably worth mentioning is just his portals so if you press two of his punches so usually you can put a portal that's close you can put a portal that's medium or you can put a por portal that's far away or if you press two of his punches, you can put up two portals. And you can do light, heavy, medium, light, he uh, medium, heavy. You'll usually probably use medium, heavy, or medium, light, because you want them to kind of be close together. Uh, you can do some cool stuff. You can teleport into both of them if you have two portals up. Uh, you can control the medium will go to the far portal and the light will go to the close portal. So if you put these up and I go to medium, I'll teleport over here. If I put them up again and I go to light, I'll go to this one. So there's some tricksy mix-ups you can do. It's a really, really good move if you have meter to just like keep them steady, right? I want to keep them pressured over there. People are going to be afraid to run through those because the timing is crazy specific to not get hit by one of those two portals. Like a single portal is already dangerous enough. Having two on screen is pretty strong. So that's a good way to burn some meter. Okay, where are we? Okay, so situations. Uh, actually, sorry, did we finish all of the... Yeah, I think all these combos. So those are basically his bread and butter combos is just to do that full screen ghost juggle. Um, okay, so situations. Let's talk about uh, some situations that you will find yourself in fairly frequently. Um, so one of these is probably just the footsie game. So footsies uh, are going to just be when you're in this position, you're trying to hit each other. Uh, and like I said, we already talked about as normals, which ones are good for that, which ones are bad for that. Um, the best thing to do, I think, for um, JP is obviously a standing heavy punch is good because you can just immediately cancel it into something. Um, and there's 14% of their health for landing one hit. Uh, again, this target combo is insanely good. There's 13%. Uh, and then even if you don't get a big combo, there's 22% of their health gone. Um, those are probably some of his better pokes. But realistically, like you got to keep them at range and check with this crouching medium kick. Uh, you can always do his overhead if you want to be risky. Um, but it's... Yeah, it's very situational. Like JP does not have the strongest footsie game and that's really where I think his weaknesses are. He's okay though. He's not horrible. He's just okay. Um, so you're going to find yourself in the footsie game a lot, especially as you start playing better players. Bad players are just going to get murdered across the screen as you just spam this crap on them. But uh, that doesn't last very long and you'll start to find yourself much more like having to have that actual fight with people, especially when you're playing against certain characters like DJ who can rush across the entire screen in three frames. Um, so you're going to find you're going to need to be good at that neutral poking game. Uh, corner defense. So I got this pre-recorded, I think. So let's talk about this. So you're going to find yourself in the corner a lot on JP. Uh, it's very unfortunate because in Street Fighter 4 and 5, this is not that bad. 
In Street Fighter 6, it's brutal because if they drive impact you, you get wall splatted and you're gonna die. So um, yeah, you don't wanna be here and it's hard to get out. So like I said, his crouching jab, his crouching light punch is one of his better ways to like get people off of you. And then if you land it, uh, you can confirm that and that'll throw basically full screen. So it gives you a little bit of space. Uh, and then once you've landed something and you get them full screen, you want to go into your kind of poke game. Uh, see how it's not quite full screen though, it's more like, sorry, full screen's the wrong term. Uh, medium. So if you get a knockdown, you can go into stuff like ghosts and then go into some spikes and try to push them and actually get a full screen mix up from there. The other thing people do is, um, like I said earlier, he's got this move that throws out a single bomb. It sucks. I highly suggest you never use it because it does not start up on frame one. The EX version, on the other hand, is pretty good. It's still risky because it has a very short duration. So you want to be careful. But if you know they're going to hit you or you're going to make that gamble and you pop that, you get two bombs. They don't hit that hard. It does 1200 damage. So the problem here is that for the most part, you can't guarantee anything like a, any other like Dragon Punch or Shoryuken from some other character gets you confirmed damage immediately. With JP, you get potential damage. They can also just uh, like uh, Shoryuken you right back after you land that. So there's nothing that you can necessarily do. But if they're doing a heavy move, um, let's see if I can time this right. Oh. You can get a punish counter. So basically it does freeze the frame and gives you the advantage to swing again. And on the punish counter, you can do some cool stuff. This combo is really hard and I just learned it like yesterday. So I'm gonna show you guys one of the, I think best ways to get people off you for pressure and really punish them for going in on you in the corner. Uh, but it's probably gonna take me a few good tries. So basically you do is you pop this, you get that punish counter, you set up your portal, you pop that. Oh, or I'll do it first try. There's 35% damage. So basically um, you, Pop the portal and here, let me turn this recording off for a second. You pop the portal and then you need to do back quarter circle punch again to make the portal pop early, which hits them in the air and juggles them back towards you. Then you do forward heavy kick, like I was talking about, that's that anti-air one, which you cancel into heavy H spike, which gives you the wall splat juggle. The problem is that the forward heavy kick will often miss. So let's try that again and I'll, uh, I'll try to show you how it's gonna screw up a lot. Like, just like that. So basically that's the problem with that combo is a lot of the time it'll just whiff on the H spike, heavy H spike connection, which means you won't get the wall splat. So you'll drop a lot of damage. So the other option you can do, uh, if you wanna be just a little bit maybe more consistent is on this, if you land the punish combo, you just let them bounce and you can just juggle in the corner from there. And it's pretty much like very similar damage if you get two spikes off, especially. Um, so that one's, I think, a little bit easier to pull off. It's slightly less optimal, but uh, it's probably your main go-to BNB for when you're getting pressured in the corner and you manage to land that. The other thing you can do is uh, just be tricksy, right? There's always just the panic, uh, jump, uh, kick, uh, do one of these and, you know, pull off some damage somewhere. It's not as good as landing a guaranteed punish counter, but if, they've, if you maybe only manage to counter a light punch or something, uh, you can't confirm damage, so that's what you have to do. But if they do go in with a heavy or something to meet you, uh, you can know that that's going to work. You will guarantee that you're going to get that punish counter. Uh, okay, uh, other than that, honestly, corner defense, just block your way out. And if you manage to get yourself a little bit of space, put up a portal, and then now they have to decide, one, the portal's dangerous, it'll, it'll spike them, or two, you can just teleport out. Um, and that's really JP's best way to keep screen space. Anytime you've got a portal, they start coming in on you, just teleport behind them uh, and then just kind of keep yourself spaced that way. It's a really hard game to get used to. And I think JP is an incredibly difficult character to play, but that's one of the better ways from getting crushed in the corner. Unless you're fighting Ken, because even if you teleport behind him, he'll just combo you across the entire screen anyways. So whatever, just accept your fate. Um, okay, hit confirm drive cancels is the next on my list. So uh, hit confirm drive cancels, Basically, uh, again, every character's got ways to kind of go into longer combos. So landing one standing medium kick, 600 damage. However, you land a medium kick, drive cancel, and do it properly into a heavy punch, uh, you can now do basically his entire combo. Or again, if I do it properly. Into whatever, right? So there's 30% roughly before you super. I don't like that everybody uses super as they're like, look how much damage I can do, because you're not gonna do this off everything. But yeah, off of a single medium kick, you do 50% damage in Street Fighter 6. And honestly, it's pretty easy to do once you get used to it. Uh, with JP, you will be doing this uh, This one a lot is really his his main combo. Uh, I don't didn't need to burn the ghosts. 
but that's like his probably his main easy to confirm drive rush uh, drive cancel that uh, you're going to go into is just standing heavy kick to or heavy kick to heavy punch um, target combo. That's a really good one. Although the other thing you can do is uh, sorry, I think this is a B and B I didn't show earlier is um, if you have the uh, sorry when you uh, have a punish counter. So when you're drive impacting, this is one that I missed out on before. Um, you can do this target combo and. Uh, or you can do the target combo into the cancel and there goes three bars for 32, 34 damage. Or, uh, oops, sorry, drive impact. Or if you just wait until they crumple, you can just do this. Uh, oops, I did not connect it. Try that again. And I missed the spike. <laughs> One more time. There we go. That's 31%. So three bars is a lot to spend. Normally I won't do that unless I feel like I've got a lot of meter to burn or I just need a little extra damage. Uh, although just very, very important to understand if you go right into this, they can block it. You have to let them crumple. So there's a couple ways you can do that. Uh, I've seen some players, they dash forward and that means that guarantees they've got the time to get in on that. Uh, the cool thing about heavy uh, H spike is that it kind of works from any distance though. So you, for me personally, I just wait because even if they're that far away, it's still going to work. So um, it's just one of those things where if you just, I don't know, whatever works best for you. I've seen it done both ways. You have a lot of time as well after that to like confirm that they are now crumpled. So you don't need to worry too much because the timing's not super specific. As long as you wait, they're going to be in that crumple zone. So you can go faster, you can go later. Uh, there's a big window for it. It's, it's pretty easy to land. Okay, back to what we were on to. Um, Confirm, hit confirm drive cancels. So the other thing is uh, medium punch, crouching medium punch. Um, you can just confirm that into your special move or, um, well, sorry, let's turn punish counter off. Or you can drive cancel it. And again, that is a huge amount of damage increase. So this uh, combo, 1800, so 18% of their health. Or 28%. So for an extra 10%, that is a great uh, cancelable move. You can sometimes get that off you say like a punish counter on like um, a cross up or something. Oops, I didn't do that right. I didn't do it right again. Right, that's a lot of damage. Um, and like cross ups are not that rare to get into a match. So anytime you can medium punch and you have meter to burn, that's probably one of your better options for it. Or again, if you stand or land the standing uh, medium kick, that's absolutely almost always worth it. Going from 600 damage, um, or sorry, 1800 damage if you cancel into that versus uh, full combo, 2800, that's, that's another 10%. Like those medium, moves are very very worth it for the drive cancels uh if you get something like you can always like drive cancel a, a light punch uh it doesn't really go into anything that i found that's worthwhile yet so maybe i'm missing something but uh yeah there's your drive cancel options um what else are we looking at um okay so the forward heavy kick uh is another one that's good to know so if we set the dummy to jump so we've shown you the anti-airs before you can cancel that into Ghost, and it's pretty easy to confirm. It's the same thing with standing heavy punch for uh, punish counters, but uh, pretty much at any height, you should be able to cancel that into Ghosts, and any of the Ghosts should pretty much always connect. So that's a good way to just get some extra damage off of an anti-air, because otherwise you get like 600 damage. You do that, you get 1600 damage. That's again like a 10% increase in counter damage, versus if you just do a crouching heavy punch, which is your primary anti-air, uh, you're going to get 800. So you're really not getting uh, that much pressure to keep people off of you. Um, and then the other cool thing is like standing heavy kick and just forward heavy kick are just really good options. If you get them in the corner, you can also do what I was just doing there, which is um, horizontal spike, which leads into some big combos. Oh, see, because I got the two hits on the heavy kick there, that's why that doesn't connect. So in that situation, you just ghost. Oops. And you, if I didn't screw up the timing on that, you can actually connect all that. So it can be pretty strong in the corner, um, but uh, yeah, 
anytime there's a normal jump in. And then again, if you do get the two hits, uh, you just get a little bit of extra damage if you do ghosts. So usually as an anti-air option, uh, especially mid-screen, you just really want to get used to grinding in your head that you do ghosts after you land a forward heavy kick. Um, and it's something that personally I need to get better at uh, because I think I just do normal standing kick a lot of the time. The other thing to know about ghosts, just uh, while I'm thinking about all the different potential myriad of info you should know, is that they, uh, let's turn this off it's annoying, um, they only attack when they get there. They're not a projectile before they arrive. So um, if you throw them out and someone runs really, really quickly, they will literally just whiff. They attack so slowly that they can just run through them. So uh, certain characters with special moves or really fast dashes can just run through your ghosts. Um, also, I just realized as well, I never mentioned it. You can cancel ghosts, so you can fake them. So if I let it go, uh, that's 50 frames. That's how long it takes. If I hold on to the button, it only takes 34 frames and you recover. So that's a good way to like fake them out and then like anti-air their jump in or something like that. Um, it's a good game to play as well, just to get them to burn meter, which we'll talk about. Uh, actually, we'll talk about it right now. So the other thing about JP is, right, you want to play this full screen game. You want to keep them going and guessing and trying to get out of this corner. And as you can see, uh, as Jamie's trying to move, it's really, really frustrating to play against JP and you can combo 30% of their health off of a single fireball. So this is really where you need to get some damage every round to really balance out the fact that JP has weak normals. Uh, because his like close up, close range game is, is bad and his corner carry is, it's actually decent because he throws the character really far with everything that he does. But because he doesn't move himself across the screen, uh, you don't actually get a lot of screen distance. Whereas like somebody like Ken can just like um, Tatsu and like literally carry himself and the opponent all the way across the screen. JP will find himself rarely pushing somebody across the entirety of the screen to the corner. Normally what you'll find is to get corner pressure is they push you into the corner and then you've like teleported out or jumped over them or something. And that's when you get corner options. So uh, what you really want to do is try to figure out the best way to kind of like do tricksy mix-ups. The thing about JP though is other than his command grab, which is super slow, 52 frames start up um, and he goes yo way to make sure that everybody can hear him doing it as well. Uh, it's the only time that you really catch people is when they're trying to just parry everything on wake up. Now the thing about parry, if you look at the top of the screen, is it burns meter, right? Every time you press this button, you lose some meter. So if you don't hit them with something, they don't gain that meter back. So what you want to do is try to get them to do this a bit and like, look how much meter I'm burning. This is crazy. So if they're trying to guess when you're going to do your spike, you just don't always necessarily spam it on wake up. So once you get a knockdown, um, they will, oops. You can do this again, and basically you can um, you can meaty their wake up. So if they press any button or they try to walk, you get a guaranteed hit on wake up. But the easy answer to that is just block or hold parry. So if they just parry, then you get nothing. And if you throw a ghost and you do this, like they can just parry all of that, and it just guarantees the high low mix up of his ghosts, low low ghost versus high ghost doesn't matter because they can just parry everything and be perfectly safe. So what you want to do is either A, when they parry, you go for a command grab, which if you catch them with that is pretty good, but it's super risky because it basically lets them out of the corner. Command grab is so slow, they can jump and run across the whole screen while you're recovering from it. Um, or you just wait. So the other thing about JP that's really important is just understanding how to get some pressure out of this. So good players know how to get out of JP's mix up if you just do the standard ghost spike, ghost spike. What you want to do is you want to delay that spike. So for example, some of the times what they'll do is they'll try to dash in the middle of the screen. So you'll just randomly look like you're going to spike them on wake up. And instead you hit the medium punch one, which will catch them as they run forward and throw them back into the corner. Or you just delay it a little bit. So instead of doing it immediately on wake up, you kind of just do some of these little crouches, trick them out, and then just whenever you want, there you go. So you can just like whiff a move. Um, and if you get them to burn parry, that's a really good game to play because you just basically want to get rid of people's bar. Because once they run out of bar, they can't do this anymore. And unfortunately in Street Fighter VI, that's like one meter. It's one of the best moves in the game and it's amazing and you're never going to use it all the time. And for some characters, JP is like very slow and like methodical and you hear ha ha and walks very slowly. Other characters are like a bullet. They blink at you. So uh, I'm sure you guys will have seen that a lot. Okay, let's keep going down the list. Um, let's see, I did anti-airs, uh, crouching heavy punch, standing heavy kick, the forward heavy kick canceling the ghost, cross-ups. So cross-ups, uh, JP's cross-up is his uh, light kick. So as you jump over, that's his cross-up button. Try to do medium kick or something, it will not work, so do not try that. Um, and yeah, this, this is... Uh, it's okay. But basically what you would normally get out of it is just crouching light punches. Again, if you land like a 
a counter hit, you can do a medium punch and then you can do it like a drive cancel and you can do some crazy combos. But for the most part, uh, that's just kind of my go-to combo for landing a cross up. And the main thing about that is again, giving you distance and screen space. So it's a good way of once you got somebody off of you to throw them further away. Um, the other thing you do is if they're blocking uh, or you know they block the cross up uh, is into his tick throw game. So basically it's how many jabs are you gonna do before you throw? If they guess throw too early, then you get a confirm, but they can kind of like fuzzy block it as well. But most people aren't gonna be like spamming throw on every hit. So yeah, that's basically one of his like, you know, easy points of pressure. You just take like a half step and then you can throw, uh, depending on how many jabs you've done. If you've only done one jab, you should just be able to throw right away. So that's like a good way to utilize his, uh, his mix up game. Um, again, the other thing you can do is uh, one of his other situations, obviously so we haven't talked a lot about this, but his teleports. Um, the cool thing about teleport is uh, on that one, you know where it's gonna come out, but it kind of, it's so tricky. I genuinely can't follow which side I'm gonna land on. So when you teleport, like, is it gonna go to the back or the front? I don't know most of the time myself. So the, one of the best times to teleport is right when the character is like right above the portal or the portal's right above them. Because that is so tricky. Like that portal was clearly in front of Jamie, but it shoots you out at an angle. So it's like really hard to tell. Um, like that, I wouldn't guess that would be a cross up, but it is. Uh, this one's going to obviously be a cross up, but when you're right above them, it kind of like shoots out and can land on either side. Uh, so it's really, really like, it's really good uh, for just like a kind of crazy mix up. I usually come out of the portal with a um, light kick and then go into a lighter combo. Although uh, you can come out with heavy kicks, which can give you a really good confirm as well. And that's going to be way more damage, obviously. But the problem with heavy kicks is if you're doing a mix up and you don't know where you're going to come out of the portal, like if I know I'm coming out in front, heavy kicks all the way. If I am not sure if I'm going to go through this or not, because that light kick is his cross up, you probably want to use the light kick and then you get way less damage off of it, but it's a lot, a lot trickier. So if you're portaling in front, just go for the heavy kicks. Uh, and then the heavy kick should land low enough to let you go into his target combo, which is also a good thing to note. Uh, sorry, this video is insanely long, but uh, I hope this is going to help a lot of people. When you land JP's heavy kicks from uh, high up, you cannot do his um, his target combo. If you land his heavy kicks from like chest below, then it combos. So when you portal, it kind of guarantees puts you at that height because you don't really pop out very high. When you're doing just a jump in attack, you got to be careful because that's where you're going to want to confirm into his crouching medium punch versus uh, trying to go for this where they're just going to get nothing out of it. So. Just uh, another kind of one of JP's oddities is you only get to do the target combo if you land lower. It's a thing you just kind of have to get used to for when you're doing your jump-ins. Uh, so sometimes that can be unfortunate. Obviously on punish counter, it'll work no matter what. But if it's just like a regular hit, uh, you got to land low or you're going to not get that follow-up. Okay, down the list. Here we go. Keep on going. This is a big old info drop. Sorry, guys. It's going to be uh, messy in a long video. So... Um, Corner pressure. Okay, so when I've got somebody in the corner, um, what do I do to as JP? So there's a couple of different things you can do. Um, personally, I love doing the uh, the target combo. If they block it again, I burn a bunch of meter. It's actually got like a pretty good uh, amount of reach for uh, meeting as well. So if people don't always see it coming. And if you're like right up in their face, you can just straight up meaty the heavy kick and it's extremely safe uh, on block, block all. This is already plus two on block. So if you meet it, uh, you've got huge advantage. So it's a really, really good meaty. Again, you can be, it's easy to read because there's a 12 frame startup. So it's not like a super easy thing for people to react to, but uh, they can wake up super. Um, if they drive impact and you're doing this, you'll get to drive impact them back. So that's fine. And then same thing, if they block it, you can always mix up into a drive impact. They can DI it back because that's always an option, but it is one of those things where, you know, it's harder to see coming like drive impact comes out faster as a cancel versus like wait for it to end and then drive impact which is really really easy to react to um so i like that as one of his corner options uh he's got a couple of different setups as well like if you have a portal up and you throw them you can then standing heavy punch uh well, i guess oh, that didn't work sorry uh that was too slow yeah i didn't do that right away so if you set up the portal throw right away there you go, and then you can. I could spike after that. That's a lot of damage for a corner thing. The only problem is once you set this up, people know. Like as they get to higher ranks, they kind of know what that is. So obviously, like you know, that's going to pressure them on its own. 
The other problem is setting up a portal is too slow. So um, if I knock down Jamie, if I turn block all off, so if I knock down Jamie and I try to set this up, I'm gonna get punished for it. So what you can do though, is you can EX portal. And then now I can block. What else have we got? Um, oh yeah, ghost mix-ups as well. So basically, normally, if you land a ghost uh, anywhere, you that's it, you get that 10% damage. But in the corner, you can go high ghost or low ghost, and that's actually a mix-up because you can then do a crouching light punch. So because he doesn't get pushed back far enough, uh, you can actually combo that. So basically, instead of your 10%, you can do ghost mix-up. Oops, I did not time that right, or that. Now I'm talking I didn't cancel it. There we go. There's 20%. So you can do that, although ghosts are slow. I had a 26 frame startup. I personally don't do a lot of this. Um, if you've, once you kind of train them, you've done a couple of meaties or something, they're a little bit scared, you know, it's fine to go for. The uh, medium ghost is like your best, fastest one, but, or you're sorry, light kick ghost, but the one that goes in the middle. However, uh, it doesn't do a high or a low mix up, so it's not really worth it. And so, yeah. You can go for that. It's an option in the corner. Obviously, uh, off of drive impact in the corner, you're going to get the wall splat. So JP's probably best thing to do off of a wall splat is just his forward heavy kick. So you get the launcher uh, and then you can combo from there. Uh, like I said, though, if you get the two hits, um, the weird interaction is uh, you can ghost pretty easily off of it. But uh, why am I not getting this combo right now? One second. You won't get the heavy uh, H-spike juggle. So unfortunately you can't like follow up on the wall splat to a wall splat. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. So you can always, you know, you can just do 20% damage or something as well if you just want an easy combo. Um, and if you try to do his target combo again, because they're airborne, you won't get that second hit, so they'll just fall. So don't go into that natural state. Uh, and then of course, because they are well splatted, you can always use his super or something like that. Okay, um, talked about teleport mix-ups, um, drive cancel options, drive, oh yeah, drive rush options. So this is a good one, and then we'll cancel, or we'll finalize with some option selects, and then I'll show you guys a couple of games of how this actually works in practice. Um, so his drive rush option. So basically, uh, you can obviously just do anything off a of drive rush, but really what are like his better options is basically the same thing as his normals, right? So like drive rush into heavy kick is great. You can do it and it'll kind of like slide him forward and give the heavy kick like a lot more distance. And then you can obviously cancel that into a target combo. Um, his uh, overhead combos uh, into crouching medium punch. So that's just a nice way to get like a little bit of extra damage for a mix up. Uh, JP's drive rush is super slow, so a lot of people will just see it coming if you don't drive cancel. But I think the drive cancel on like block is really not worth it for the most part on JP. Uh, unless you again just need a little bit of damage to like clutch out around or something. Um, the other one that's really good is his crouching medium kick it goes really far and you can press it really early. And uh, you'll get like a really good hit or a counter hit if they try to stop you. So I think that's probably one of his best ones, plus it's a low attack. Um, and then I think finally, I just realized one thing that I should mention too is, is uh, crouching jabs combo. Uh, you can link from the crouching light or the crouching light to or light kick into the jabs. So for the first one, you can always go low. That's just a good way to make sure that you're forcing that either they're blocking low or you're going to open them up. So when they're standing here doing this and you just go for jabs, if they block or they do a uh, standing block, they'll block it. But if you start off with a kick and then go for jabs, um, it uh, just gives you that high low mix up, or sorry, not high low mix up, just low to mid mix up. But it kind of forces that if you know someone's just not thinking or they don't crouch block, and they just block for any reason. That's a good way to open them up as well. Um, okay, so uh, option selects. So basically, JP has a couple of things that I think are kind of good to know for standard option selects. This is probably very similar to most of the cast. But uh, if you press medium kick and you uh, press forward forward, you're only going to get that cancel if that kick lands. So you can basically, anytime you press that medium kick, you can always just throw that out there as an option select. Um, the problem with that though, is that if they block, it will still come out. So it's not a guarantee that it only happened on hit or something like that. So you do need to just factor that in that you're basically like gambling your, uh, your meter. You're going to burn a lot of meter if you just do that willy nilly every time. But if you're pretty confident it's going to land, I would suggest always throwing it out. Or if you're really not sure about the range, you can always just, you know, option select that. And that's a nice option. Um, another one that's good is let's on punish counter. 
Uh, do, 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 always punch counter. So standing heavy punch. Uh, it's actually kind of hard to react to late. Uh, if some, like if you land the punish counter, it can be like, like you can see there, I just did a uh, move and it didn't really come out. So it's probably one that you're gonna wanna option select a lot of the time where you just kind of input some sort of a special move so that if it lands, it lands. The nice thing about uh, if we put on always block. So uh, H spike is plus four, the heavy version, if it lands. So worst case scenario, they block and uh, you cancel into it and uh, you're pretty far away and you're gonna be plus as long as that lands. The issue though is obviously drive impact and jump are really, really good counters to that. So if you start being predictable, they're gonna just drive impact you and that goes straight through all of his H spikes. So you're gonna get murdered for that. It's frankly just gonna happen in some of your games. Um, but yeah, that's a really good one. And then the other thing too is uh, because of the punish counter, let's put, JP, or let's put Jamie in the middle of the screen here. Um, if you do get that punish, oh, I have left block all on and turn punish counter off. Let's change that up. So you do land that punish counter, uh, that gives you a juggle. So again, from 30% damage for landing one normal is worth it. So yeah, that's a risk. They can jump, they can drive impact, they can get around you. If they drive impact as you're pushing that button, you can drive impact back and it will cancel. So same thing. You can cancel that and drive impact pretty easily. If they don't, um, if they try to drive impact and you're doing this, for example, you can't, again, like I said earlier in the video, you can't drive impact until that second hit comes out. So that's a very common scenario to get into. So that's why this standing heavy punch is slightly better in some ways, but obviously this is just such an awesome set of moves that uh, you're gonna wanna definitely use that in your arsenal as well. Um, and then I think the other one is just uh, ghosts. So for, um, for heavy punch, sometimes you can actually get to a range where the uh, that will whiff. It's very, very specific, and based on the character model, you might not run into trouble. I don't know if that actually like can whiff on Geef, for example, but um, you can always just do ghosts as a really safe option there as well, especially if you don't want to maybe push them too far or something. Um, that's a, another easy cancel that always works and connects off of a punish counter. So there's your hits. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything I know about JP. Uh, there's probably still something I've missed, but I've tried to be very, very, um, very extensive with explaining everything you can do. So, got all your different combo options, uh, but let's put some of that into practice and go watch a couple of games. Okay, so right out of the gate, you can see Marissa thinks she's got it, but then the absolutely beastly last second JP head woggle gives me that advantage that I'm really looking for for the match. Now, right away, we start off into Marissa plays a little bit passively, which gives me an opportunity to start opening up doing exactly what JP wants, which is to get some pressure. The minute she gets in, I go into defensive mode and I try to block, catches me at a long range normal I wasn't expecting, and she gets me crammed into the corner. Now, at this point, you're in danger zone. JP is in trouble, so I go for a bit of a risky drive impact, land a combo, and start putting some pressure back on Marissa in the corner. Jumps over my target combo, unfortunately and then I'm just getting caught with different kind of meaty wake-up options, and frankly, Marissa's combo damage is insane. So I really don't have a lot of an opportunity here to really play the game. I get caught and just butchered in this first round. So not the best example of defense, but just kind of a showing of what does happen to JP a lot in matches. I didn't want to just play games where I win. Uh, so, you know, you can get really pressured more. There I go for the sweep instead of a combo because I knew she was out of range for any of the cancelable normals. So I just went with the sweep to kind of get that confirmed knockdown. Again, we find ourselves shoved into the corner. Marissa is an incredibly aggressive champion. I'm trying to just be very, very cautious here, and she's burning a lot of her meter and kind of get in. You can see me go to set up that corner combo, but she just parries her way through everything, and I didn't get the punish counters, so unfortunately I don't get to push her all the way back. And she does a good job pushing me back around and swinging me into the corner. But again, just wait for your opportunities. Uh, you can see I set up the double portals, which she pushes in and acts aggressive through again. So once you got your defense up on JP, you can just block and a lot of people will just run themselves into damage. So that gives me a nice amount. And next thing you know, life lead is gone and we are now equal. Uh, I use that one long range poke. As I said, you don't use it too much, but if uh, they're coming in or they look like they're not ready for it, it's a good option. She does a panic super full screen. Marissa's super can catch JP, but uh, not from that distance and not with something as fast as EX portals. And let's move into a match here with uh, Jamie. So with Jamie, uh, again, I bait him in, jump up, just play the footsie game, get an advantage. You can see me setting up those mid-range spike spikes I was talking about to try to prevent him from getting in. Now, unlucky for me, he grabs a perfect parry off of a teleport out of a portal. That's just bad luck. It's going to happen sometimes. And you see, I'm just playing the footsie game at the moment. I'm just saying medium, popping out a target combo, trying to get a little bit of his uh, bar gone. 
And uh, I managed to get them back again. And you just see, like with JP, that's your game plan. Just constantly push them back using portals, using that target combo, um, and just kind of like throwing out that pressure as much as I can. He finally gets in with a kick, and then he goes for a risky drive impact, which I have time, plenty of time to respond to. Uh, and again, leads me into a nice opening. I barely even took any damage, and you can see just how much pressure JP had to go through to get into me. Um, he goes for that early drink, and I go for a really weirdly whiffed kick. I think I was trying to judge the distance a bit wrong. I go for the risky drive impact. He gets a weird aerial off of it, so I get a bad reset, and now Jamie's in. This is where you don't want to be on JP. Uh, I'm back again in the corner. I'm trying to get out. I'm jumping. I'm getting caught. I go for another risky drive impact just because I was getting hammered a bit there into a nice big full screen combo. And there you go. I'm back with the life lead. And even though like I'm in bad shape, uh, there it is. And like I was talking about that teleport out, right? I set up that portal. He pushed in. I use that portal, put myself in this side. Even though I'm getting comboed, I'm still in a better position because I'm, you know, in a much better spot. Now I'm drive impacting way too much this round, but here we go. We got pressure back on. He's full screen, especially when burned out. He doesn't have any sort of really fast drive rush options and he gets in. I meant to crouching heavy punch that, so that was really unfortunate because I should have won the round early. He gets a combo and then drops his combo as well, and that lets me clinch out the round. Okay, let's watch round two with Jamie. So again, in the middle, I'm just trying to get spacing here and get him push full screen if possible. Uh, I throw the ghost a little bit when he's too close, which is a really, really big thing to watch out for. Uh, again, I get the uh, counter on JP, but I went for the combo, which is wrong because I didn't really realize he wasn't doing a heavy move, so that's an easy mistake to make. And then I'm just getting pressured. You want to watch out for this. I go for another counter, and this time I make a correction. I jump out, which is a lot better. I'm back into just defending myself. I'm burned out. He's not. He's got a lot of meter left, and we're equal on life, so I'm in trouble right here. He manages to get a combo, extends his combo, goes into um, like some heavy damage. Now, all I have really for a wake-up option there is super, because I thought he might go for the drive impact. I really didn't see him supering my super, but I think I just gave him an idea. Uh, and so unfortunately, I get caught and go down in round one. Now here I've got a slight lead on meter, but let's just talk about the things that I do based on the video. So jabs, pushing him back, confirming into that combo. Again, just taking another jab into combo. Now I've got him full screen. You can see him, he's gonna be burning a decent amount of meter here. I get a little bit lucky on that drive impact because that uh, H spike is technically three hits. Uh, and then also on that perfect parry, he goes for something a little bit too slow to actually counter from that distance on the parry. Again, I get caught. I'm using too many projectiles when he's too close. That's a mistake from my end. Uh, and he's getting a bit of an advantage, but look at the meter, and that's really where it's starting to go in my favor. I've got the life lead and the meter lead. Jamie pushes in, and again, I use that uh, forward poke to make sure I drop him. Just taking a lot, like, you'll see how many times in that round I just used crouching light punch into cancels to throw Jamie away. And that's really, like, I didn't get any massive combos, but uh, still pulled it off. The risky drink from him gives me such an easy confirm into level 3 that, like I've been saying, that's a third or a 50% guaranteed combo. So that's going to give me a half of the life bar lead right at the beginning. I've got a lot of meter left, so I'm just going to start burning some. He's been mashing parry, so I go up for the throw, and then I start putting on my corner pressure using this target combo. Again, he's parrying, 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 but uh, like there's really no danger in just letting me hit him quite a few times. So now he's really in trouble. He does another drive rush, which I counter with the crouching medium kick, which is just incredible at keeping those characters out. And it really can show how hard it is to get in on JP. Anyways, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was really long, so appreciate you watching all the way to the end if you're still here. Um, please like and subscribe. Well, I don't really run a lot of stuff on YouTube anymore. And uh, I hope you guys had a blast and it helps some of you out.